As you approach St. Augustine, the A1A passes one of the nation's great lighthouses. Its 219 steps take you to the top of the black and white striped tower. Opened in 1874, it replaced a Spanish light station operating since at least 1586, when Sir Francis Drake, attracted by the light, stopped by to burn the city of St. Augustine to the ground. Just past the lighthouse is the Bridge of Lions, gateway to the rebuilt city. Founded in 1565, St. Augustine is the nation's oldest city. Three generations of Spaniards had grown to maturity in the streets of this town by the time Jamestown was founded in 1607. The city's first urban renewal plan is dated 1620, the year the pilgrims arrived at Plymouth Rock. Near the Avenida Menendez, the A1A swings along the bayfront to the Castillo de San Marcos. It's the oldest masonry fortification in the United States. This massive fortress was built from 1672 to 1695 after pirates had killed 60 of St. Augustine's men, women, and children. Throughout its history, the fort has provided haven for the town's residents. Despite numerous attempts by pirates, the British, and Americans, the fort was never captured. We continued going north. We wanted to see the famed Fountain of Youth. The site is owned by a private company, and it has the look of kitschy Florida tourist spots from the 1950s. But it's hard to resist. The site was once a village occupied by the Temecuan Indians for over 1,000 years. It's believed that Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon came ashore here in 1513. 52 years later, the city of St. Augustine was founded here. What became known as the Fountain of Youth was a natural spring that provided the Indians with fresh water. Its high mineral content gives it a distinct taste. The guides told us that this is good for you. Yeah, it's a very high in sulfur. There's also a lot of magnesium and other minerals in it, which is very good for you. much younger. With our youth now fortified, we're ready to discover the rest of the city. The central plaza was laid out in 1598 in response to a decree by the Spanish King Philip II. He directed that all colonial towns be built around a central plaza. The street layout has changed very little since then. Our 19th century oil baron, Henry Flagler, gave it a facelift. He built two hotels on the square, the Ponce de Leon and the Alcazar. The Ponce de Leon is now a liberal arts school, Flagler College. The Alcazar closed during the Depression and was bought by Otto Leitner, the founder of Hobbies Magazine. He willed it to the city. It now houses his collection of hobbies and art. The one hotel that Flagler didn't build, Casa Monica, he did eventually buy. It too fell on hard times during the Depression. But the Casa Monica was refurbished and operates today as a luxury hotel. The rooms have an historic feel, but with all the modern amenities, including Wi-Fi. There's a pool and fitness center, and of course, a bar. Its Cordova restaurant serves dishes with a blend of American, Asian, Mediterranean, Caribbean, and Moroccan influences. We asked the chef to show us his favorite. This is gnocchi pasta with uh, vodka tomato sauce. My favorite gnocchi pasta. This is my actual basil and spinach mixed together. Then I'll hit it with some of my vodka sauce, tomatoes. That smells great. There you go. Oh, it's 
it's a creamy mm -hmm. but you can tomato. See the taste of tomato. Absolutely. And the cheese. Mm -hmm. I don't have to eat it all. <laughs> well, I was gonna eat give all, I was gonna all. offer you a bite. <laughs> but then you decided against it? <laughs> no, I was doing that right this moment. Tram stopped just outside the doors of the Casa Monica, making this a convenient place from which to launch our tour of the city. A tram tour, or carriage ride, is a good way to get an overview of St. Augustine. You can head back for longer stops at your leisure. It's a walking, friendly city, and there are plenty of shops for those so inclined. St. George Street is the best known shopping district. Its 25 restored buildings give it a living history feel. There are museums sprinkled in between the shops, like the oldest wooden schoolhouse, the oldest surviving wood frame building in St. Augustine. As your tour widens, you'll probably come to the Gonzalez Alvarez House, the oldest house in the city. It's been continuously occupied since the early 1600s. There are still descendants of the original Spanish families in St. Augustine. We asked Sandy Craig why her family has stayed here for over 13 generations. My family has been in St. Augustine about 400 years. St. Augustine is such a wonderful, magical place. I'm sure it wasn't to the early settlers, but they did have the tenacity to stay. And uh, thank goodness, because my one ancestor that stayed when the British uh, just prior to the British occupation was a, a Spanish soldier at the fort and uh, he was asked to stay and take care of some things, uh, get the, the city ready for the British to come in and the last ship left him here and I might have been in Cuba otherwise. There's plenty to see and do here. But you may want to just relax and go fishing or sit on the beach. It became clear why the Spanish fought to keep it. But driving the A1A makes getting here a lot easier than it used to be. A perfect way to end a journey.